You are welcome to Growing in Christ podcast. My name is Olushegun Mokuolu, and in this episode, I'll be responding to a question. Can a Christian be possessed? Can a Christian become possessed? To address this question, it is first important to define who a Christian is or to define what we mean in this context by a Christian. A Christian is somebody who is born again. A Christian is somebody who is regenerated. He is somebody who has confessed his sins, who has repented of his sins, and then confessed Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. A Christian is somebody who has received the Holy Spirit and is walking in the Spirit. Now, somebody who is given birth to by two Christian parents is not a Christian. It's important we define who a Christian is clearly so that we can then understand the context of that question. There are many people today who identify as Christian, but they are not Christian in the context of the scriptures. A Christian is somebody who is born again. Except the man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Actually, a Christian is a disciple of Jesus. He is a follower of Christ. He has denied himself. He has picked up his cross and is following Jesus. Anyone who is not following Jesus is not a Christian. So, now let's ask the question again. Can somebody like this be possessed? Can the Holy Spirit and demonic spirit co-dwell in a body? The answer straight away is no. The Holy Spirit and demonic spirit cannot co-dwell in a body. That's why I'm always surprised when I hear someone who says, I'm born again and I have a spirit husband. Number one, there is nothing like spirit husband. That's another satanic deception. There are demons. Why are you calling demon spirit husband? There is nothing like spirit husband. There are just demons. You don't have any spirit husband. You just have, it's a demon. But can you have that when you have Jesus Christ as your husband? The answer is no. However, In order to give us some form of clarity, let me explain the different levels of possession and oppression of Satan. Get those two words I use. Possessions and oppressions of Satan. You remember in Mark chapter 5 verse 1 to 20, there was a man there that was possessed by legions of demons so somebody can be possessed not just by one demon but by several demons now this is the level of possession that most people are familiar with in which the mind of the man is completely taken over that man no longer has his mind he is doing things he ordinarily could not do naturally they try to bind him but he could not be bound. And then he will go to the tomb. He will be cutting himself and so on. He does not know what he's doing. He is no longer himself. He can't deliver himself. He is not himself anymore. But thank God for Jesus. Jesus came and in one moment, Jesus delivered him. Now, let me just comment also on the way the man was delivered. You know, for Jesus, it was simple command, get out of him. When you look at the apostles also, it's always a simple command. Anywhere you see people saying, get out, get out, get out, get out, it's a lie. The question is, when you say get out the first time, and when you shout it seven times, what's the difference? Is it the number of your get out that's going to drive the demons out? Or your faith in the name of Jesus. It is the name of Christ that they obey, not you. 
So you don't need to shout. You know, when people think of deliverance, they think of warfare. They think you have to sweat. There's nothing like sweating. If you are passing by and somebody is possessed and you know, and you know the name of Jesus, all you need to do is that in the name of Jesus, you the spirit get out. Go, continue your journey. You don't need to repeat it twice. That's all. Because it is the name of Jesus. Just as you don't have to call the name of Jesus when you are praying. You don't have to say, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. He is not deaf. Can he that create the ears not hear? He is not deaf. Stop all those religious activities. Jesus warned us against repetitive words. So, you see, the way you deal with demon is that you issue command in the name of Jesus. There is authority in that name. It doesn't make you in any way a special Christian, a powerful Christian. You are not powerful. The only person that is powerful is Jesus Christ himself. And it is his name that drives them out. One command. You don't need to jump up and down. You don't need any activity. One command and that is all. If one command is not enough, let me tell you, 1,000 command will not be enough. Like the disciples found out. They kept on trying. Nothing happened. Don't keep on trying. If nothing has happened, then check yourself. You are the one missing something. It's a command that is needed. So that is one level of satanic possession. You will remember also that in Luke chapter 13 verse 11, there was a woman that was bound by the spirit of infirmity. That's another satanic possession. But this time around, the mind of the woman was not taken over. It was simply demonic spirit affecting her physical body, restraining her physical body. They can, you know, you, can you see how wicked these spirits are? They bent this woman and they held her in that position so she couldn't release herself. So that's another level of possession. You see, I want you to see the various levels so that by the time we tidy it up and we are concluding, you can then understand how a Christian can be a victim of certain things and how certain things can certainly not happen to a child of God. So this woman, it was her body alone that was, aff- that was being afflicted by a demonic spirit. That there was actually a spirit that bent her back and held it in that position for 18 years. That's, that's, that's total wickedness. That's why you gain nothing to align with Satan. When you align in sin and unrighteousness, you align with this wicked spirit. You gain nothing, brethren. Let's stand for the light. Let's stand with Jesus Christ. Then, you know, there was a young girl that was also possessed in Acts chapter 16, verse 17. That told Paul, these are the people that come to show us the way of the Lord. That girl was normal. If you ask her, what's your name? She will tell you, my name is so, 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 so. Where are you schooling? She will tell you, this is my school. She was within her senses. But because she has a spirit living in her, she could gain access access to information that she ordinarily does not have access to. So they could take over her voice. They could take over her will when they want. And then they could just allow her, she would be like any normal girl around and so on. But she could come up again, give prophecy. Okay? You could have people like this in churches. And they will be giving prophecies. They will be giving accurate things. You remember the Jezebel in the book of Revelation? That Jesus said she taught and seduced his servants. You see all manner of people. That's why you need to be careful. You see, everywhere they are always seeing visions and prophesying, there will always be great error in such places. If people do not focus on the word of God, that all they are doing is vision, this one we say, so does hear the Lord, and many lives have been destroyed by those kind of things. Many lives. Many will refuse to do something that is renewable for years because they are holding on to some form of wrong prophecy, some form of word, you know, and because they've seen some things that looks like it's true, what they don't know is that there are a lot of people who are speaking by these spirits. So that's another level of possession that this, the girl had a spirit, but she still had her mind. And when they need her, 
the user. There was also, there is also this involvement in in satanic possession, like the Simon the sorcerer. You see what he was doing. He was with with himself, but he was cooperating with demonic spirit to deceive people. That's what happened with sorcerers, with uh, people in occultic world, witchcraft, and so on. They are working together consciously with demonic spirit to afflict men, to deceive men, you know, to perform things that ordinarily they cannot perform. But nonetheless, they are still a victim of Satan. They are working with him. Some people can't live. <laughs> Even when they know this is now, this is wrong, they can't live. They are held bound in such occultic uh, practice. Then I'm getting closer to some of the most dangerous ones. Is the one that there is one we find in in Luke chapter 22, verse 3. That is probably one of the most dangerous level of oppression of Satan, if not the most dangerous. That was Judas. In Luke 22, verse 3, the Bible says that, And Satan entered into Judas. Not demon, <laughs> not some spirit. Satan himself. Satan can enter into people and operate in them. And that happens when he wants to do some serious operations. Some world leaders have experienced this, that they were able to kill people in millions. They look normal to you. They talk, they look like they are brilliant sharps. But Satan was the one operating in them. Now, look at Judas. If you greet Judas on the way, he will greet you. We say, what's your name? We say, my name is Judas. He was within his senses. He had his senses. But the scripture says Satan entered into him. But everything seems normal. Now, you will think that the man, the Ganasaret man, the man that was possessed, that was biting himself, jumping up and down that they couldn't bound, you will think that one level of possession with legions you will think that is more serious no this is the one that is most serious they could wear suit they could come on pulpit they could be well dressed speak good english they could be head of institutions but satan is working with them they don't know often it takes advantage of either greed that will always be a sin that opens up let me say this to you the way a door is in the physical the way a door is that when a door is locked you can't come in now but when you take key and put it when you take the right key and put it you turn that door you're able to go through that door that is the way sin operates in the spirit realm when you are in christ you are in a closed door when you give, when you go into sin, when you keep going into sin, you put the, the right key into the hand of Satan. When they open, they can come in. So that's what happens to unbelievers. That's the way they are possessed. Because they live a life that opens up the door for Satan. So Satan took advantage of the greed of Judas and came into him fully. So can you imagine as Judas was walking that day just to betray Jesus? You would think, what is the big day about this assignment? The devil knows how big the assignment is. So there are human beings that you will come ac- you may have even come across that it's Satan is the devil that is fully functioning and working in them. They will speak good English, they are normal, they are within their senses. But yet, it's Satan. And when Satan is done, you know, when Judas had betrayed Jesus, he now felt bad. He was within his senses. And all that the devil did was to just tell him and say, see, my friend, go and kill yourself. What will you do? You have betrayed a righteous man. Go and kill yourself. Make the matter worse. (laughs) So he killed himself. That's another level of satanic possession. And I think this is probably the worst. But I'm going to share one more. And that's the one with Peter. And that's the one I want every believer to be aware of. That's not so much of a possession. 
is a much of suggestion, but it's important that I mentioned it. When Peter told Jesus, he, he, the Bible says he took Jesus aside and rebuked him, saying, you will not die. Stop saying these things, Jesus. No, 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 no. You are not going to die. I think you can find that in Matthew 16, 23. Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. How? Where was Satan? I thought it was Judas. Talk, eh, sorry, I thought it was Peter talking. But Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. What happened at that moment, and that's the one Christian needs to be aware of, is that Satan has said those words to Peter. And Peter, not being spiritual, he could not discern that they were words of Satan. He thought he was doing the right thing by telling Jesus that he was not going to die. You know, humanly speaking, it sounds good. That's why there are many preachers today on our pulpit that Satan is speaking through them. They are telling you what you will, what you want to hear. You will not suffer. You will not know poverty again. You will begin to swim in money. Those things sound good. Let me tell you, there are doctrines from the pit of hell. You know why? Those things they are saying, exciting to you, but it does not lead you to the truth. And they also feel good within themselves because they believe that they are helping your life. They are God's tool to shape your life. So they are saying those nice things to you. You see, the devil speaks nice things, but nonetheless, it's from the devil. So the devil was telling Peter, how could Jesus die? No, 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 rebuke him. Tell him, tell him to stop making negative confession. Tell him to stop that. He's not going to die. He's going to live to fulfill the purpose of God. So Peter said that. <laughs> Peter said that. Now that is possible for a Christian, a born again Christian to fall into. That Satan can begin to start speaking to you. That is possible. That Satan is not inside of you. He is only being suggestive from outside. Satan is permitted to speak to you. He spoke to Jesus. <laughs> He's permitted to tempt you, you know, but we have victory in Christ Jesus. So can a Christian be possessed? No, a Christian cannot be possessed. Can a Christian be oppressed or manipulated? Yes, by demons, by Satan, if that Christian gives room for it. If that Christian gives the key for it. When you walk in the flesh, there's no way you will not be oppressed by the kingdom of darkness because you are walking in their domain. Everything, if you love this world, you are walking in satanic domain. The Bible says that for all that is in the world, they are not of God. That is 1 John chapter 2. Let me read it to you, verse 15. Love not the world, Neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. They are not of the Father, they are of Satan. So when you love this world, you make yourself vulnerable. You present an opportunity for Satan. If you love money, oh, you are a you are ready tool in the hands of Satan. That's why the Bible wants us not to love money. For the love of money, the love of money is the root of all evil. It doesn't mean we won't use money. Don't love it. Don't love it. Let not money be your source of joy or your source of sadness. When you begin to compromise because of money, it means you love money. Even as a preacher... When your preaching is now based on money, what you can get, you know, I've heard of preachers that will even tell people the honorarium they will take before they speak. You know, all of those things, they are string to Christianity. This message is free. Anybody should be able to invite you. They should not be under pressure of giving you money. Now, I'm not saying is anything wrong that they give you money, but it should be at their own discretion. If they don't give you, they, hold, they do not owe you any obligation. You owe them to preach to them. Paul said, woe unto me if I do not preach the gospel. He said, I am a debtor both to the Jews and to the Gentiles. 
Those are men who understood calling. It's not all these people who are dense, who are armed robbers today that are just robbing people. When you love money, you make yourself vulnerable to Satan. So understand that when we are talking about satanic possessions, demonic possessions, we are not talking about one thing. We are talking about various levels by which Satan can operate. But brethren, I must not end but end on this note. We have victory in Christ Jesus. I have not shared this to scare you. <clears throat> in fact, I have shared this on the contrary to show you that we are overcomer in Christ. Colossians 1.13 it says we have been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of the sun. From the power of darkness into the power of his son. So when you are in Christ Jesus, the Holy Spirit and demonic spirit, they cannot co dwell together. They can't. But you must be discerning enough such that what happened to Peter, you don't allow such things to happen to you. That's why as many as walk in the spirit they are the sons of god if you walk in the spirit but if you walk in the flesh you will die so we must learn to walk in the spirit not to walk in the flesh to judge what we hear to judge what we want to say by the word of god i see many believers sharing posts that antagonizes christ but it sounds good to them it sounds good to them. A lady shared a post some time ago that I read, and I had to comment. The post said, whatever it takes that makes you happy, even if it is at my expense, just go ahead and make yourself happy. I said, well, I know husbands who are making themselves happy with other women at the expense of their wife. I said, that's what you are now preaching. She said, no, she doesn't mean that. I said, that's what the post is saying. And then she went to, to go and remove it. Some we share posts by Buddhists, you know, things that sound, that sound well. You know, people don't know that Satan, if Satan comes today, he's going to preach what many of your pastors are preaching. Excellence, Satan will preach it. Prosperity, Satan will preach it. The only thing Satan doesn't want is Christ. He can preach, Satan can preach the whole Bible to you, minus Jesus. Just remove Jesus. That's why his son that is bringing to the world is called Antichrist. Anything Christ, he doesn't want it. Because that's where the salvation lies. The, Jesus said, this scripture testifies of me. We may learn different things in the Bible, but this scripture ultimately testifies only of Jesus Christ. So we have victory in Jesus. We are saved in Christ Jesus. He said, all power in heaven and on earth has been given unto me. And I said, which one remains for the devil? <laughs> nothing please stop glorifying the devil stop saying the devil is powerful he is not powerful he has been defeated Jesus make a pub made a public show of them he triumphed over them he defeated them on the cross and that victory is what we have now our life is hid in Christ Jesus far above principalities and power to him alone be glory now and forevermore amen my name once again is Olushegun Mokuolu. If you want to be receiving this Growing in Christ podcast, all you need to do is just to write me on WhatsApp. Tell me your full name and your interest in the Growing in Christ podcast. The number is this, plus 234-818-615-7852. You can use that same number also to ask me questions, uh, to share anything you may want to share with me for those of you who are watching this on the youtube channel the details my details are in the description below remember to share this message with other believers and then you may consider subscribing to this channel until next time when by the grace of god we bring his word to you again may all glory power honor adoration be unto jesus christ alone now and forevermore amen